Has Red Bull been illegally adjusting the floor of its Formula 1 car between qualifying and the race, or is this latest controversy more about McLaren trying to destabilise its main rival at a crucial stage of the season? F1 wouldn't be F1 without a healthy dose of ultra-competitive teams sniping at each other over suspected illegalities on their cars. McLaren has been forced onto the defensive in this regard recently, as Red Bull led the pushback against clever, flexible front and rear wings that it believes have been key to McLaren's recent competitive advantage. But now it's Red Bull that's back under the technical microscope, as McLaren wants the FIA to thoroughly investigate whether Red Bull has been adjusting the height of its floor under what are known as Parc Ferme regulations, a crucial period between qualifying and the race, during which F1 cars are not allowed to be altered for performance reasons. At the centre of this latest controversy is the fact Red Bull's 2024 F1 car has a way of adjusting the height of the front part of the floor, known as the bib, that is unique among the 10 teams on the current grid. The conventional adjuster used to change front floor height during, say, a practice session is accessed from beneath and all the current F1 cars have this. The other adjuster, only present on the Red Bull, is apparently used to accurately align the floor with the chassis when a new floor is put on. To do this requires one person working inside the cockpit aligning the floor while the other person adjusts it outside with a tool. What makes it controversial is the fact that the FIA has decided this could be a way for Red Bull to get around Park Ferme regulations and make floor adjustments between sessions that otherwise wouldn't be possible or allowed. In theory, a mechanic adjusting perhaps the pedals or seat belts for driver comfort reasons, which is permitted under Park Ferme rules, could actually be changing the floor height using this second adjuster. Being able to adjust the height of the floor's leading edge would allow you to derive maximum aerodynamic performance from running the floor low in qualifying before raising the floor for the race, when the extra weight from full tanks of fuel would otherwise risk the underbody plank wearing beyond the permitted 10% thickness, which is what got Lewis Hamilton's Mercedes and Charles Leclerc's Ferrari excluded from the 2023 USGP. If forced to run a lower ride height than ideal for the race, the driver would need to take care not to ground out the bottom of the car over bumps and refrain from aggressively riding curbs, which is something the Red Bull drivers were specifically instructed to be mindful of during last year's Belgian Grand Prix, where they had to lift off the throttle at the bottom of the usually flat out Eau Rouge to avoid grounding out the planks on their cars. Now you'd imagine that if Red Bull were adjusting their floor heights between qualifying and the race, they probably wouldn't have encountered that issue. The FIA released a statement in the run-up to the United States Grand Prix reminding teams that any adjustment of the front bib clearance during part Ferme conditions is strictly prohibited, but that same statement also admitted the FIA had not received any indication of any team employing such a system. Nevertheless, as part of its ongoing efforts to enhance the policing of the sport, the FIA adjusted its procedures to ensure that front bib clearance could not be easily modified. At this stage, it wasn't entirely clear whether this was just another generic clampdown by the FIA or something that targeted a specific team, but within a few hours of this FIA statement came a report from the BBC outing Red Bull as the specific target. Within that BBC report, Red Bull admitted to the existence of the adjuster, but claimed it was inaccessible once the car is fully assembled and ready to run, and said it had agreed a plan with the FIA about how to manage use of this device in future. At this stage, it looked very much like Red Bull had been caught doing something it shouldn't. Why else would you need to agree a plan with the FIA about how to operate your car from now on? This appeared to have echoes of the infamous Ferrari engine deal agreed ahead of the 2020 season. We can't prove you did anything illegal before, but we're going to act now to make sure you definitely can't do anything illegal from this point onwards. It seems the FIA got wind of this Red Bull adjuster in Singapore and specifically requested Red Bull leave it alone between the end of qualifying and the start of that race. From Austin onwards, the adjuster is fitted with an FIA seal so as to ensure it can't be tampered with in Parc Ferme without alerting the scrutineers. This should ensure Red Bull definitely can't gain any potential advantage from now on, but that hasn't been enough to fully satisfy McLaren. Their concern is the potential advantage Red Bull might have been gaining up until Singapore, and they want the FIA to keep investigating that. McLaren isn't buying Red Bull's explanation. Team CEO Zach Brown feels Red Bull probably had no choice but to declare the existence of the device as it's an open source component that is visible to all the other teams. If you're wondering why that's the case, well as part of F1's cost-saving drive under the cost cap, 
Since 2022, teams are required by regulation to make the designs of certain components that aren't considered to offer a significant performance benefit available for all the other teams to see, the aim being to discourage an expensive technological arms race on basic areas of the car. Brown's argument is that Red Bull wouldn't have designed its floor adjuster in this way without the intention of using it, and that the FIA wouldn't feel the need to fit a seal to it if it was simply a harmless difference between the Red Bull and the other nine designs on the grid. He also thinks Red Bull's point about the device being inaccessible when the car is fully assembled is a misdirection because F1 cars are allowed to be disassembled in Parc Fermé to make permitted changes such as replacing like-for-like -like components because of damage or to improve the driver's comfort. Presumably, Brown thinks Red Bull is potentially asking its mechanics to pretend to be making a driver comfort adjustment to the pedals, for example, while secretly adjusting the floor height using the internal adjuster. Brown is calling for a thorough investigation and massive consequences if Red Bull is found to have been adjusting its car's floor illegally under Park Ferme conditions. He's even suggested that Red Bull's senior leadership and both past and present mechanics should sign an affidavit saying the floor was never adjusted illegally, saying the only way to bottom it out is the old-fashioned sign here stating what has gone on, with the threat of severe consequences should anyone not tell the truth. The big problem with McLaren's argument is that the potential for misuse doesn't prove misuse itself. McLaren's own Lando Norris put it quite well when he said, it's one thing having it on your car, it's another thing on how much you exploit it and use it, which we have no idea on. If there is any evidence of Red Bull using its mechanism in Park Ferme conditions, then the expectation would be for action to be taken. The FIA could have responded to this more seriously. A rival team could have protested at the last race in Singapore. That this never happened would suggest it is the potential for the Park Ferme breaching adjustment to be made, rather than the strong evidence Red Bull has actually done so that's got people alarmed. If the device exists as essentially a preparation item to more easily make a setup change when the car is being built, then that would not seem to be a problem. Proving its primary purpose isn't the issue here, it's whether it gets used during part Ferme conditions at all, and nobody seems to be able to say it was. Given the device exists in an open source environment for all rival teams to see, and that is how it became a topic in the first place, it would be absurd for Red Bull to have designed and employed it in an illegal manner. There's hiding in plain sight, and then there's making the evidence of your supposed crime available to your competitors. That's probably why Max Verstappen was so bluntly nonplussed by it. But, theoretically, it could be used in a way that would contravene the regulations, so best just to scrub that prospect from existence. That means taking steps to remove the possibility of a device being used in an illegal way by fitting a seal. It seems like a neat solution unless any evidence emerges of actual wrongdoing because suspicions alone count for nothing and potential illegality isn't really a thing. Red Bull team boss Christian Horner accused McLaren of moaning and lighting fires to distract from its own legality issues with its flexible front and rear wings. McLaren has come under close scrutiny since the August break for pushing the limits of acceptable flexibility with its front and rear wing designs. Already, McLaren has made modifications to its rear wing, which appeared to create a mini DRS effect by bending backwards at high speed in Baku to shed drag and boost straight line speed. Horner pointed out there had been an awful lot of noise about this recently and suspects McLaren of causing trouble for Red Bull to divert attention. Horner also revealed the second floor adjuster has been present on Red Bull F1 cars from 2022 onwards and can only be accessed when the pedals and other panels are removed. He says the FIA is totally happy with Red Bull's device and has no belief that Red Bull has broken Park Ferme conditions. The FIA's own Nicholas Tombassis also played down the controversy, calling it a non-story and suggesting it's normal for rivals to get rather excited about each other's cars when a championship fight is so close. He admits the FIA can't definitively say nothing happened in previous races and also thinks it's beyond the realm of possibility to properly investigate those past races now, but the FIA is satisfied with how Red Bull is now operating its car. Red Bull has also confirmed it intends to make modifications to the design to eliminate any doubts. But McLaren clearly isn't prepared to let this drop. Brown accepts that the measures that have now been taken are a good solution, but he's still pushing for what he calls a look back to be carried out to give rival teams confidence that nothing untoward has been going on. But does McLaren really have a point here, or is this just a bit of good old fashioned title fight psychology, some competitive paranoia that spilled out into the open? 
Even Brown has referred to the fun and games in how people go racing and what tactics they use from a sporting perspective. It's always been part of the game to try to get into your opponent's head, whether by taking shots at them in the media or bending the ears of the FIA with your suspicions, founded or not, about your rivals' cars and operations. Similar things raged between Red Bull and Mercedes in 2021, only now the black cars have been replaced with orange ones and Toto Wolf has been replaced by Zac Brown. Talking of Wolf, he didn't miss an opportunity to take a shot at Red Bull as well, calling the whole situation outrageous, mocking Red Bull's demonstration of how the tool worked and saying it's not good enough to just promise not to do anything in the future. And whether this is the end of the front bib controversy or not, it's clear that the flames of the off-track war between Red Bull and McLaren aren't going to extinguish anytime soon.